Hi everyone, it's Cherry Enchantress. I am so excited. My friend and Sparkle of Light and member, Amira Deshawn, has sent me an amazing package full of oracle cards. So I want to do kind of an unveiling and take a look at this. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Growler. Just stay right there. It's all good. It's one of his favorite spots. But this was too big for me to, to um, put anywhere else to take a look at. So I think that this one, I'm going to go ahead and do a, a, a flip through review of this one after this unveiling is done. Because this is the Mystical Shaman Oracle and the artwork is Jenna de Grotaglia. And I love her artwork. It's so amazing. And then look at these. The Divine Feather Messenger. Some of these I can use as giveaways. You decide um, if there's anything in here that you like, you let me know. <laughs> We've got the Guardian Angel reading cards. Beautiful. Here's one that this book has been on my list. Chakra healing and things more having to do with chakras or chakras. <laughs> and the Wisdom of the Trees Oracle. That's perfect because I'm like sort of a tree person I love this and I love the box is so nice and I got this beautiful crystal watering can let's um I'll take that to the altar and open it up for you and so you can see what that looks like okay we had a storm this morning so it's a little overcast and the lighting is a little dimmer than usual but let's take a look at the beautiful crystal watering can. I can't wait to see it. Oh, how cute. Oh my goodness, that's so pretty. Very pretty. Very nice. <laughs> it looks good with all my flowers. There you go. Thank you so much. Oh, what else is in here? Anything else? Just padding. Oh, that good. <laughs> and then we get a little message caring and safety and how to wash it very nice beautiful 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 so sweet so now let's take a look at the um at the mystical shaman oracle deck and guidebook so it's a big kit which i recommend whenever you're shopping for decks you know first type in to see if you see kit because a lot of times it might be like a copy that doesn't come with the book and somebody's copied version of it or something like that so just keep that in mind so but unless you want it like that sometimes it's nice to just have a small smaller and less expensive version of the original but it, you know for value's sake you might want to get the original <laughs> in the kit so this is before there was time, before there was language, language, there were sacred symbols. Let's, I love these flip books too. I mean, flip cases, very nice. Ooh, this is a very nice book too. So we'll take a look at the book for a moment. Mystical Shaman Oracle. So this Colette Baron Reed, oh yeah, it Jenna de della Grotaglia. She's one of my favorite artists. Colette Baron Reed, one of my favorite favorite um, writers. Alberto Violondo, Violondo, and Marcella Lobos. I don't, I'm not as familiar with their names, but uh, yeah, cool. So Alberto. Violdo, Violdo. I don't know if that's Spanish or Italian, but we'll just go with that. <laughs> Interesting. I haven't heard of those decks. I definitely know all of, pretty much all of Colette's decks, though. Okay. The authors give a message. There's an introduction. This is a big collaboration, that's very nice. Double motion of the oracle. Law of synchronicity. How to work with this deck. How to ask a question. 
the source and outcome, north, south, east, and west, the cards, and then we go into the description of each one. Can't wait to see what they look like in color. Jenna de Gro della Grotaglia. They're probably Italian. Jenna and also the other writer, um, Alberto. Let's see. So yeah. The rest of the book really is just um, black and whites of the cards and the description. And so it's broken down in the essence, the invitation, and the medicine. Of course, I land on the tree of life. <laughs> so that's really nice. So let's take a look. I don't think that's it as far as everything in the book. The medicine. <laughs> and then about the artist. And about the authors. And then a bunch of... The other art authors and the publishing and all of that. Okay, so let's take a look at the deck. It comes with this, you know, flap thing to pull it up. Well, that didn't work too well. Here's the second one. That's the, oh, okay, that's for the deck itself. Okay. All right. I like these. Is this Hay House? Hay House always has the best packaging. Nice and loose, not not full of plastic. Ooh, look at that back. That's cool. So um, they're real smooth, you know, that kind of matte finish and very smooth, similar to like um, not like a not like that recent one that I got the. Um, um, Colette's recent one, the Crystal Spirit, it, it's hurt. That one has a very fine quality. This one's pretty good though. This is more like, um, hmm, I don't know which, oh, more like the Animal Spirit feeling texture. Anyway, <laughs> all right, so let's get, I mean, it's still a nice texture. It's a little sticky. See how they stick in groups a little bit. So, you know, for shuffling purposes, it might be harder to um you might have to powder them and i still haven't figured out where to find some um not talcum powder but cornstarch powder can't even find cornstarch powder anymore okay so here we go the holy mountain they're uh they kind of got out of order i guess that's okay because maybe um amira took a look at these first <laughs> all right so uh the holy mountain the hummingbird the hunter, jaguar, mm -hmm. the journey, lightning. I love it. I don't think I've had, there's, I have a single card that says lightning, except in the charms. You know, I see lightning comes out in the charms. Interesting. Like that. This is good for my son. Like some son has a lot of electricity in him and he keeps wondering about that. The Lower World, Luminous Warrior, that's a very beautiful drawing, I like that, Magic, Many Paths, <laughs> Get Airplanes, The Magic Wheel, The Middle World, like Midgard, it's like, like Norse mythology the moon or 3d you know or like i like that because this is kind of like your life is or your relationship is middle world relationship and which is not a bad thing sometimes you want to get it there <laughs> to the mid world to the tree are you going to the tree the moon the mystical shaman the owl <laughs> Patch a mama. <laughs> My nose is kind of like that. It's more like <laughs> the rainbow. I like that too. I, I don't know if I have any just pure rainbow cards. I have rainbows in lots of cards, but not just. Okay, here's 42. The answer. The rainmaker. 
the rattle the sweat lodge never heard that either that's what i like i like cards that have whole different you know like have words that you just haven't used before the sweat lodge this is so interesting because if any all right i'm going to take a moment to just shout out um cheryl lee harness she was one of my favorite people she was one of my original gurus back in like the early 2000s like 2008 9 10 maybe 2010 <laughs> um but when I discovered her and her fractals and all of that, I read a book she wrote, A, a Seed of Love, and, and there is kind of like this sweat lodge um, moment where she's in Arizona and she's with the Native Americans and, and it talks about aliens and all kinds of interesting subjects matter, but hmm, I'm really curious. Let's see what this one is about. Why not? Let's see what the sweat lodge is about. Just just for kicks and then we'll keep flipping through and you just stay with this channel and you can see me put these in use and get more information about each card. So the essence of the sweat lodge is the sweat lodge represents the womb, the mother earth. Volcanic stones are heated in fire outside, then brought into the lodge and placed in a shallow hole in the center. Participants sit in complete darkness around in the red hot stones to sweat away old habits and beliefs and heal disease. When you return humbly to the womb of the mother, you are offered a second chance. The invitation here is this is a time to journey inward into the dark and hidden places of your soul to reconnect with the ancient earth wisdom. You can also create a sacred and intimate space in the dark by lighting a candle. Observe what emerges and without judging it, invite it to bring you its gifts. You are being offered an opportunity to shed and heal from the aspects of your life you have outgrown. Don't worry that you will be consumed by the process. And then the medicine is, life is offering you a second chance, take it, since this chance may not come your way again for a while. Mother Earth is calling you into her womb and inviting you to incubate as long as needed for a spiritual rebirth. Gift yourself time to be with your darkness, your fears, your pain, and your seeds of beautiful potential until you come out the other side free, wise, and full of creativity. So there you go, like, uh, <laughs> that's very beautiful and deep and spiritual something came to mind and then i lost it again but uh, i'm just thinking about people's private readings and how you know they might be going through suffering and stuff you don't have to suffer though like you have you if if you take these opportunities these portals so sometimes you have to take that Time is kind of like a portal of opportunity, a window of opportunity is what I usually call it. So when we get to um, timing um, readings, always remember that. Sometimes it has a high energy and it's that's the time where you can jump through that portal. But other times the portal is closed, the opportunity is not as strong. You can make an attempt, but it may not always be as successful as the attempt you make when the energy is very high. So just keep those things in mind when you are, when you're making choices, because sometimes the timing, um, the, you know, the time being ripe, you know, is is special too to the to the to your situations. Anyway, yeah. So, but you know, keep a positive outlook and attitude, and just remember, like, you know, when I was just thinking, I had a storm that that blacked us out for a little while and that would that's kind of like universe giving you an opportunity to sit in the dark for a moment you know um instead of being fearful of the dark or needing to turn on lights right away or cursing the dark and wanting to get your electronics going again enjoy the dark you know so make the most out of all these different moments that are like gifts from the universe all right here we go <laughs> the drum look at that beautiful artwork the earth keeper flow the crow ancient ones the Andean cross they are a little bit like the good tarot but the good tarot is glossy and the um, the animal spirit tarot are, is, is kind of just like this the arrow 
beauty way. The beloved. The blade. The child. The circle. Completion. The council. Wow, that looks neat. The coyote. The curse. Oh, I want to know what the curse is. <laughs> the eagle. The earth. Fire. Ghost dance. The giveaway. That's that's a little different way of saying, yeah. But I like that giveaway. Heart of the sky. Vision quest. Upper world. You got middle world, upper world. I wonder if there's a lower world in here. <laughs> the witness. Wind. Wild woman. Water. That's so neat. The tree of life. Time master. Hmm. I like him. Thunder. I had thunder this morning. He shakes up my house. Taming the wind. The sun. Stand still. The staff. Spiral, soul retrieval, <laughs> the sacrifice, the sorcerer, smoky mirror, the serpent, the seer. All right, let's see what this curse is about too. And then if you're if you're good, then you can go. But if you're curious and you want to know what the curse is about, you can hang out and listen to me read the curse. All right, so 14, the curse, huh? Some of you ask curse type questions every once in a while. I try to keep things light and not go to those dark places, but you know, we get curious. What what maybe there's something that happened that I don't know about. So the essence here for the curse is the curse refers to the limiting stories of our ancestors and the karma from former lifetimes that preordains the events of our lives. Yeah, some people have asked me about this. Curses and um karmic ancestral inheritance and that thing. The curse that I worry about was by a single person, so I just wanted to know about that. It is the source of negative patterns and it can show up as a disease, a destructive force, or a blockage on your own, on your on our creative energy. The curse holds us hostage to a false story that we confuse for reality. Recognizing the original wound that is playing out in our life can heal it. So that's kind of what I've been told. Like, there's really no such thing as a curse. That's just your put upon idea. It is time to recognize the source of your limitations. Did your grandparents live with a mindset of scarcity? Did you inherit genes for heart disease? Were you a slave or a master in a past life? This karmic legacy is re ready and waiting to be seen, to be untangled, and to be released. Honor the players and their stories. Forgive everyone and everything. Craft a new life course for yourself. The medicine is to be aware of your actions. Act with impeccable intention so as not to create a debt or karma that sooner or later someone has to pay. What you do to others, you also do to yourself and to people you love and the, love the most. Now you have the opportunity to clean it up. All right. So even if life is good, don't create any bad karma for yourself or anybody around you or your next life, even whatever. Um, yeah, now is the time to clear your karma and to do good deeds and 
to go into the lights and <laughs> and and to be a light worker. All right, thank you guys. So don't pay attention to the curse. That's just um, like man-made. That's your beliefs, a, a, a lack system that you have to let go of. Okay, so I hope you like that. Fair trust the pixie dust.